Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another episode of Apex Investor. It is our daily update for March the 16th, Tuesday. We're going to start with our value picks. We have none, so we're going to, we're going to skip straight to the meme stocks. And full disclosure, I don't like the term meme stocks. It's just something that the internet knows it as. Uh, these stocks are really good companies. Uh, AMC and GME are good companies. Uh, to relegate them to just meme stocks is kind of a disservice to them. But I understand that when you label them such, that's how they became big. So yeah, okay, they're meme stocks, although I don't particularly like the term personally. Uh, AMC, just looking at their uh, stats here, their market cap is over $4 billion. I don't really look at this, so I'm looking at this really closely now. And their institutional ownership, 16%. That's okay. Um, the RSI is 65 overbought. And volume today was 125 million, so just under their average. And shorts float is almost 20%. Uh, these numbers, I don't believe they're true. I think it's closer to 100, maybe 200%. AMC and GME are the most GME are the most uh, shorted stocks in the stock market. So I take these numbers with a mountain of salt. I don't believe them at all. Uh, and what else? What else can I say about this? 52-week range, well, two dollars to twenty. And we know what's going on with this. Is this is the Litecoin of the stock market? This is the only stock where your money will be safe in, besides GameStop. And today. Uh, Let's look at the performance for the day. It was between 1234 to 1362. Just like I predicted, it would hit the $12 range. It would drop, and it did in the first hour, just like I was saying. And it dropped as low as 1234. So that was a good dip. And then you buy that up, and you can you know, sell it again, hold it, sell it at whatever, 20, 30, 40, whatever you like, but just sell it high. Um, and so looking at today's range, again, 1362 was the high. And after hours, 1306. So uh, so it was a down day overall, minus 7% for AMC. But uh, not to worry, this thing is just warming up before it takes off. Uh, looking at the last week or so, a good dip would be $10 in my mind, $10, $11. Uh, I did go down to 1243 I don't know if it'll ever go below that again. I mean, it has a lot of support now. I mean, this could be new support. This could be it. $12, $12.43 could be the new support. Personally, I probably think it's around 10 to 11, but that's just my personal opinion. I'm not a financial expert or advisor, so I can't be held liable for if you do what I say, but I just have good opinions, uh, not good opinions, good instincts. Okay. Um, so that's all for AMC. Let's look at GME now. GME has a market cap of fourteen billion, um, and their inst institutional ownership is ninety five percent. Holy, that's a lot! I never realized it was that much. So it is really being heavily manipulated. Uh, if you're looking at it from that perspective, that the institutions are not merely big companies but they are mostly hedge funds that are shorting it. And the short float is 26% compared to the 19. Again, these numbers are probably fake. They're shorted to oblivion, uh, both pretty equally, pretty evenly. And the volume today was just under their average as well. And this is overbought, just like uh, AMC with 60.88. This is 65, so AMC a little more uh, bought. And the 52 week, 257 to 483. Again, this is, you can't really read that and just take that too seriously because once again, uh, AMC and GME are in their own universe. GME being the Bitcoin of the stock market. And after hours, we can see it's at 201. So overall, it was a down day for GME. It really dipped today uh, at 172. So that was a great price to get it. I was predicting 180 to 200. Uh, so 180, 172 is a wonderful fire sale price because it surged right back up to two, almost 220, I believe. Yeah, 220. So that's a, a spread of uh, 28 
plus 20 48 dollars bread that's amazing and one up to 220 70 so again uh the dip really is 180 i was right 172 was a little below the dip below my uh, personal opinion of what support was so so you know what one 180 is pretty safe for support even 173 was a little i think on overreaction there but 173 to 180 you can count on it going back down uh it'll go up and then it'll go back down to that support level uh, that's the way it seems that's where support seems to be and resistance looks like 330 for GameStop. Yeah, 325. 325 is pretty safe for our resistance. If you want to have a good sell price, like I know people are going to be up in arms about this, but this is the stock market. I'm not, I'm not just about memes, I'm about making money. So 325 to 330, you're pretty safe selling that. And wait for the dip again. I don't know if it's ever going to dip again after you sell it, but that's that's what it is. It's a risk. It's Wall Street bets, not Wall Street guarantees, like uh, Trace Trades uh, says. And he's correct when he says that. AMC, you can bet a resistance will be uh, 13 13 dollars. It's pretty good resistance. And we're right there, right right at 13. So uh, this is going to drop again. <laughs> it's going to drop again. It might go down to, uh, what was that, $10, $10.11, something like that. I think $10.11 is pretty safe. It's a good price. $10 is a really good price to get uh, AMC. So if you want to buy the dip for either one, uh, you're looking at $10.00. Nine to ten dollars, okay, just to be safe. I'd say nine to ten dollars for AMC is a really good price, and then you can uh, get a ton of shares at that price and then resell it at 13, 14. But then when the squeeze happens, it's too late, so you have to be careful. Okay, when am I selling? Is a squeeze going to happen? Because once a squeeze happens, you can't buy back in, it's gonna be you need to keep a portion there, you can't, you can't uh, sell at all, you have to hold a lot of it. So I wouldn't be reselling a lot, I'd be holding a lot and just reselling, you know, maybe a little portion if you want to do day trading with this. And GameStop, like I said, 175 to 180 is pretty safe support. Okay, so that's our support there. Uh, those are our bases. That's where the volume is. That's where the buyers are. So we're going to move on to Reddit. It's going to be the shortest video I've done in a long time. All right, so I'm here on AMC's subreddit, AMC stock. And this poster is saying that Friday will be a huge loss for those betting against AMC. He wouldn't be surprised if we saw some big short attack on Thursday going into Friday. And this is regarding put options, which is the opposite of call options. Uh, put options where you want the stock to go down. Uh, call options are where you think the stock is going to go up. Okay, so this person is guessing, speculating that these put options are mostly hedge funds because regular people don't have a high volume of over 300k puts um, because they don't have to disclose this information to the public he is uh, speculating that it's all them and we're going to see losses in the tens of millions for the hedge funds he closes his post saying that um, i believe we are about to see a massive squeeze and they have dug themselves into a hole, the hedge funds. That is impossible to get out of. They could try doing illegal things like that they always do. <laughs> but at this point, I don't even think that would help them. So let's keep positive vibes in the community. And I say to that, amen. I'm illiterate. I'll just buy and hold. Yeah. Okay. Let's move to the next one. So here's a picture. Picture is worth a million words. So there you go. Greatest, greatest modern wealth transfer and GME apes and AMC apes strong together. And you know what? Here we go. It's an ape. It's on ape. It's on this coming Friday will be exciting for you. That's great. So I'm going to go to Wall Street bets next. And I know I've been somewhat bullish, not really bullish, but uh, not exactly 100% on board with AMC because I did sell all my shares and 
uh, switch them to GME. However, I have to say I'm a believer in AMC going to 2008, but that can only happen if GME uh, goes through the short squeeze first. That's mandatory for in order for AMC to succeed. Okay, so I'm going to look at these posts on Wall Street Bets first, see if there's anything worth reading. Okay, here's breaking news regarding Kramer, the guy from Mad Money, Jim Kramer, from his book in 2006. He's, he writes here, uh, let me try to get to the top. Situational buyers missed this move, but you didn't miss this move if you watched Mad Money, and you didn't act like a snob when you picked stocks. The situation with GameStop was slightly different, but it followed the same pattern. GameStop sells video games, and because most analysts and money managers don't play video games, they ignored the stock. I like the stock, even owned it for my charitable trust from before the show started. This guy's a big hypocrite. <laughs> Truth just came out. Right there in Wall Street Bets. Great post, great post. Oh, that This is nice. Hopefully there's pizza in these boxes, but... This guy is bringing it to GameStop to feed them uh, some pizza there. I just hope there's actual pizza in there. I, I pr think there is. Uh, if we go to the next slide, let's see if it will load. It's having trouble loading these pictures. So uh, according to, to Zero Hedge, Bill Gross is short on GME. He's selling call options at $250 and $300. Um, looks like WSB just found its next Melvin. Uh, so yeah, if if his options if that doesn't meet that number, um, looks like it's going to be very bad for him. Okay, okay. No, he's selling these call options, and they're too expensive. I think that's what people are saying. Uh, they're too expensive at the moment. Okay, I don't really get it to be honest. I'm not a person that is an expert on call options and put put options. I just buy the stock. That's all I do. I just pick stocks. I buy it and I hold. That's all I do. I'm a I'm a freaking ape. Okay, not GME related or anything, but this is Tesla. Uh, Elon Musk will now be known as the techno king of Tesla. And Zach Kirkhorn will be known as master of coin. That's, that's just jokes. <laughs> All right. We've got two more posts to read and then GME subreddit. We go. Okay, so there's this picture of a Bloomberg terminal. And I don't know if I'm reading it correctly, but it looks like uh, shares that are being held looks like 115%. And uh, it looks like, like it hasn't changed. Like you're still holding on uh, to these uh, float. What am I trying to say? They're, they're shorting it. They're continuing to short it. I think that's what it is. But let's read this comment. No one really bought or sold GME. The price drop is extremely artificial. Also, institutions own 115% of GME somehow. Lastly, shorts shorted again. Basically, that 600 million loan getting put to use for the same tactics on a different day tweaked a little. Uh, option volume increased for the witching event. Same storyline as last week on, on schedule, basically. No one knows which options will be in the money Friday and how many will be exercised. Good portion will be bought by, uh, what's that, market makers, people with skin in the game, and free capital will probably exercise more in the money options. And we wait Monday for the pre earnings run up or drop off Wednesday. It's either a poo storm or back on track again. To three hundred dollars. Yeah. So. Okay. So they're saying it's an actual decrease of seven percent, but I mean, I don't know if I really believe these numbers, but uh, maybe it's a little more credible than before because it is a Bloomberg terminal. We can see an increase of buyers and a dec decrease of sellers. Wow. So that's good for us. We can actually see. All right, so this guy also explained it. Although it says in the one column the data is from March 14, but from March 16, since uh, right next to it is the column where it says current, 
institutional shares held or 115%. So that's what I saw as well. So only institutions are holding 115%. And of course, retail, which is us, we have stocks as well. So the first picture, uh, we can see an increase of buyers. I said this already and a decrease of sellers. So that's good for us. Besides this, we can actually see the percentage of float held increased as well. But that's it for the first slide. Nothing to add. No big changes to my last Bloomberg post. That's why a massive price drop uh, like today is unlikely and unexplainable. Please look at the bottom right where it cl clearly says no one decreased or increased their positions, not even retail inv investors. Um, no one sold, really. Second picture, we can see there's no recently reported data. Look at the dates and don't panic when seeing red numbers in the picture. Besides the teacher's insurance, just taking some profits since they're obviously not willing to take any risk. Um, they hold until now. They're taking profits totally fine. No real big position. No explanation why the price did drop as it did today. Third picture. On the third picture, we can see all important call options expiring on March the 19th. Huge volume if the price is above $200 on March 19th. Even more volume than on 210, 250, 300. So uh, I guess we just need the price above 200 uh, for Friday. And right now it is above 200, but we'll see what happens in the next two days. Fourth pick. Sadly, we can see that more people are trading options, are betting and decreasing stock prices of, of GameStop. How can that be good in any way? Well, as you can see, do almost all of them bet on the price? As you can see, almost all of them bet on the price being under 200 by March 19th. If the price above 200 till March 19th, uh, all puts in this area will expire and will be worthless. So no one, really no one increased or decreased their position massively. But how did the price drop happen? Well, you may ask, uh, yeah, how did it happen? Well, although GameStop may be on the SSR list, it doesn't mean that they're not able to short it. They can only short it in the uptick. That's a huge mistake people are partially spreading. There's really no proof that retail or, ins or other institutions sold their positions. In my opinion, just another short ladder attack trying to scare you and an attempt to execute your stop losses at specific price ranges. I saw today a great buying opportunity. I bought even more stocks, as did I. I'm holding and wa I'm watching Bloomberg Terminal almost daily, and that's the data I will stick to. I hope I could help you a bit at least and, in and encourage you not to panic, but stay calm and look at the fact-based data. Okay. So that's for that post. Um, next is the mythical unicorn. The mythical unicorn, AKA extremely abnormal negative beta of GameStop evidence that shorts have not covered. So basically this post is saying the effect of short selling on a positive beta stock will be to give the stock a negative beta. I don't know what that means. <laughs> Otherwise, in normal situations, there cannot be a negative beta stock because it is only theoretically possible, not actually possible. What is GME's current beta? Depending on the source, it is 1.74 or 2.07. This is crazy. I'm currently writing my dissertation for a master's in finance and financial law. I learned in corporate finance that a negative beta stock is like a mythical unicorn. So when I noticed a few weeks ago, GameStop's beta was minus 201, I interpreted this as some sort of perversion around what is happening with the stock right now, uh, but did not understand what it really meant. Okay, this looks like a long ass post, so I'm not gonna read it all. Uh, so what is he saying? What is he saying? Okay, to me, this is all very strong evidence. The shorts have not covered and they're desperate. 
due to the absence of reporting requirements for short positions and the other myriad and innovative ways hedge funds may be shorting GameStop that we can't see, no one has hard numbers for the actual short interest in GameStop. But the beta cannot lie. Since, since hedge funds have been shorting GME since forever, <laughs> the beta was still more than one, even during the pandemic. It must have been safe for them so long as a large number of investors were not buying up GME and holding. I'm planning another post summarizing what Fabozzi says, Fabozzi says about why, under realistic assumptions, optimists set the price, not pessimists, i.e. short sellers. Okay. So um, I don't know what he said, but basically it sounds good. Uh, it sounds like they are shorting. Um, so the, the effect of short selling a positive beta stock will be to give the stock a negative beta. So that's what's happening. They, they shorted a positive beta stock. It became a negative beta. Uh, otherwise, there cannot be negative beta stock because it is only theoretically possible, not actually possible. And they're at minus two. <laughs> so that's pretty wild. Yeah, when you think about that. Uh, that's why, in my mind, in my opinion, GME and AMC are protected from a stock market crash because they've just been shorted to oblivion. All right, so this has been posted on GME as well. So I'm gonna pause and look for the good posts. So that last post I just read regarding the negative beta is the hottest post on GME right now. Okay, we're gonna read the good posts here. All right. This is Uncle Bruce saying uh, the shares are coming from, I think they're just being made out of thin air. Like they, they're they just fabricating shares. I think that's what he's saying. But again, I'm having problems with my internet. So I'm going to just uh, tell you what he said. So this post is saying, uh, according to uh, Warden, when you sell your shares, you're actually giving them to Melvin or the short, the shorters, the hedge funds. And if you don't day trade, the, the squeeze will be super high. If you do day trade, it's gonna be a lot less high. So it's probably best we don't trade it at all. We just hold till the squeeze happens. And I think that's the best play in, at this point. I mean, yeah, you could make you know a few hundred, few thousand there, here or there, but that's not gonna be a big thing compared to the millions you would make. So, I mean, the temptation is there, don't get me wrong. Um, yeah, see, I'm a day trader too, a bag holder. GME is an exception. Even day traders should respect. I'm respecting it. I'm uh, at first, I wasn't, but now I am I'm holding my shares. I had a 30k profit. I didn't take a single share. I add in the low 200s again, small size. Still got more left to put in dips. Okay, so that's all for that post. Let's pause again. Make this my shortest video of the week. So this post is saying that uh, GameStop's turnover rate is, uh, or turnover ratio, TRO, is 93%. That's 25% higher than the next high security, which is SNDL, whooping 86% higher than the entire group average. That's crazy. This means 930 out of every 1,000 tradable shares of GME have changed hands every single day over the last 10 days. This tells us GME is a very volatile stock that will trade violently given an imbalance in supplier demand, either to the up or downside. So let me ask you this. Did you sell your stock recently? Did you? What about you? I sure as hell didn't. So how is this possible? Well, easy. This is exactly what all the brilliant DDs before me have, ever, have already confirmed. There are synthetic and GameStop shares out the wazoo being traded all day long. These are fake shares with short and naked short interest estimated anywhere between two to time, two, two to five times the float. We're about to witness a historic mother of all short squeezes and balance play out before us. Wow, that's amazing. Uh, this is a great post, um, especially this paragraph. 
My fellow apes and apeettes, we are patiently waiting for liftoff on the right side of this very equation. All you have to do is hold and continue to keep this turnover ratio in our favor. The greedy idiots that decided to double and triple down on GameStop's demise will be held accountable someday very soon. And don't forget to ensure your five-point harness is buckled up tight. When this thing takes off, we'll be pulling G-forces that'll peel our eyelids back and leave a stream of diarrhea behind us. See you in Oort Cloud. Okay, so that's a great post. Um, the part about the... Uh... Anyway, good post. He's got 50 shares at 224. Um, 40 million volume can mean 40 million different shares traded at once. Or it can mean 5 million shares traded eight different times. Hold your shares, don't day trade. Make sure your broker isn't lending your shares. Can I, as a retail investor, call my shares in with fidelity? Okay, so just make sure that your uh, broker is not lending shares, uh, isn't lending them to the shorts. Okay. Last two posts. Why $10,000 per share is just to stop along the way. Okay. Okay, the Elliott Wave Theory. I feel like I read this before. Um, I, this is a lot of technical fungal de do. What is he even saying? Like, I don't really like charts. <laughs> How come the $10,000 per share is now just a stop? Okay, why? Why? I don't know. Get to the point, buddy. GameStop will go short term to around 2000 at which point we'll see a small retracement. So it's gonna go down after 2000. We'll move to our pre-launch stage at 10,000 per share, followed by a drop to as little as 7,000, followed by the rocket takeoff to 100,000 or more. Wow, uh, you know what? I, I've always said that 10,000 is realistic. 100,000 is possible, but I think a million is a dream. Like it's not happening. So 100,000, that's realistic. And he just, he's saying it will happen. I learned all of that from my very old ape called Ralph Nelson Elliott. Okay. So Elliott wave theory is what he's using to predict this, I believe. I wouldn't trade those waves. I would simply hold because I don't want to risk missing the takeoff because those price levels aren't set in stone or guaranteed. I won't sell on the way up, but wait for the top and sell on the way down because the price could go way higher than predicted. And I would rather sell at 80% of the top on the way down than selling at 100K per share just to see the top at 1 million or higher. And we really don't know where it's going to end up. Nobody knows except, you know, except God, basically. I want to invest money that I can't afford to lose. Um, so this is a great post too. Uh, thank you for that post. And that's good advice. Again, we have to remember whether it's AMC or GameStop, don't sell on the way up, sell on the way down, wait for the peak. Uh, you wouldn't know it's the peak has reached its point because it would start to uh, would drop down dramatically. Um, I mean, yeah, if you see it go to a thousand and it's dropping dramatically, that's not to say that's the end, but uh, you know what, that's, that's the gamble we all take. Um, <laughs> people would probably sell it at 1,000, but then when it goes to 10,000, what are they gonna do then, right? So it's safe. It's a good idea to at least hold, you know, don't sell at all. I'm gonna sell maybe part, but I would keep at least half of whatever I have. So we'll finish this off with Uncle Bruce here. See what he says. Favorite stock market uncle. What is he saying? Here we go. So let's listen to what he says. He's probably the the guru of the stock market when it comes to uh, the meme stocks and this movement. It's amazing how knowing his background, he's helping us now. Let's listen in here. They all have to report how many shares do they have of, Ga A of GameStop and AMC. How many shares do you have? Oh, 
froze. Okay, so they have to report how many shares they have, or they don't have to. Uh, the short sellers don't have to report that. That's what he's saying. Like one's about 20, 20. Okay, every time I record uh, this video pauses, so I'm just going to listen to it and then tell you what he said. Okay, so basically Uncle Bruce was saying that there's only so much of the stock remaining that are actual stock that are floating. And uh, so he's asking, where are these hedge funds, these short sellers getting the stock from? The answer is they're just creating them out of nothing, like out of thin air. They're, they're not real stocks, they're fake stocks. I mean, he didn't say these words exactly, I'm paraphrasing. Uh, these are naked shorts and uh, they're non-existent stocks. So um, this person said that uh, they issued bonds for 600 million is a big tell that they are running out of steam. Why would a billion dollar hedge fund need to issue bonds at a lucrative yield? So that's a good point. I heard that earlier today as well. Um, to borrow the shares that are held in margin accounts. I can't stress this enough. Please diamond uh, hands in cash with margin disabled. Yeah. Yeah, I don't do margin either. I just buy the stock, the, the full stock. And I've, to this day, I've got 84. Originally I had 300, um, but I got burned. The first time the squeeze happened, I didn't know what I was doing. So I'm at 84 at the moment. Everything's in GME. So hopefully we go up to the moon, GME first, and then AMC after. Uh, but we're in this together. And whether you buy GME or whether you buy AMC, it's all good. Your money is safe. I'm not going to tell anyone to sell AMC for GME or vice versa. You know, you make your decision. And I could be wrong. AMC could be going to 2,000. And GME could be going to a million. We really don't know until the dust settles and we'll know that uh, most likely in the next year. I mean, I don't want to make any bets, but I think by in a year's time from now, so March, 2022, we'll have a better idea of what happened when all the dust settled and whether many people became millionaires. I mean, we already have multiple millionaires on Wall Street bets, but even we're going to have a lot more, I think, after all the all this is said and done. Okay, every share sold three times over. Okay, so I think that's all for today. Uh, we're looking at, we're on the verge of the greatest uh, transfer of wealth in probably human history. Um, for some reason, I just have an inkling, well, not an inkling, but I'm inspired to say that there's going to be a lot of people who will be selling. They're going to be day trading GME, AMC, because they can afford to. And the irony of that is that uh, when they want to buy back, <laughs> they're going to want to buy back into this stock, but that squeeze is going to take them. It's going to take them unawares. When the squeeze happens, the short squeeze, it's going to happen at a time when they least expect it, at a day and an hour that they didn't expect. So they're going to be again, taken uh, unprepared. They're going to be unprepared when it happens. Uh, they're going to be in for a shock because once they want to buy back into the stock, it's going to be too expensive. Uh, whoever had you know thousands and tens of thousands of shares will wind up with only a handful because they've been day trading it in massive amounts or in large quantities. And by the time the squeeze happens, they're going to be left you know, buying it at super high prices along with the hedge funds. So the best thing to do is to just hold, just hold the stock. Like uh, my fellow apes have said, you, know, you want to hold the stock, uh, just wait and watch, be patient with it. Um, so the irony, I'm going to end this video with this point. The irony of, of it all is that... <laughs> Those who are rich by the definition of, you know, they're used to being rich and whatever, they'll still be rich, but they're going to miss out on an opportunity. Uh, I don't mean all rich people. I'm talking about people who day trade. 
um, GME AMC, you know, buying, buying uh, low, selling high, which is fine. But I mean, in the big picture of things, it isn't fine because you're only taking away from the potential of just how big this mother of all short squeezes will become. So don't do that, please. Um, again, the irony is that those people day trading, they have thousands and thousands of shares, but uh, if they just, you know, if they didn't do that and, and uh, okay, I'm going all over the place, but basically scenario one or person A, this is person A who is, he has 10,000 shares and he ends up, you know, selling, let's say 9,000 at $500. And then the short squeeze happens and he's not prepared. So he has to buy the stock again at 10,000. So he's only getting like one, two shares. He's only getting a handful of shares. Whereas the person that had, I don't know, let's say a hundred shares and held because they don't day trade it. They just stuck to the plan. They end up with possibly, you know, a hundred times 10,000, which is, I don't know what, a million. It's like over a million, maybe 10 million. So they actually end up the better because they just stuck with the plan. And although they were poor because they're not, you know, holding thousands of shares, they just stuck with it and they waited and they were patient and uh, they didn't, uh, they didn't, uh, lower their, they didn't go down to, you know, selling back and forth. They didn't day trade it. They didn't have to, uh, I can, I just can't speak English today. I can't speak period. <laughs> English is my native language, but I can't find the words. So I apologize for that. But basically they didn't have to relegate themselves to uh, day trading it. They just stuck to the plan. They just held and, and it worked out for them. So I'm going to close with that. Today was a good day. Uh, you know, I picked up more shares at a cheap price. And uh, it's what I anticipated uh, for this week that it would drop. And I expect it to drop again, Wednesday, maybe on Thursday again. But Friday, I think we're going to see a rise. My opinion, I think we will. But looking at the historical uh quadruple witching hours or witching days. I really didn't see any volatility. I, I didn't see any of the major stocks experience a, an increase or a drop. So very well, I mean, it's also likely nothing will happen at all. So I wouldn't get my, uh, you know, I wouldn't get all frustrated about it or angry about it. I wouldn't be up in arms about it if nothing happened at all. Uh, this is a long play. Uh, we have to wait for the squeeze to happen. We have to be we have to be patient. Uh, this is a battle of patience, a battle of uh, psychology, because the price is psychological. That's what Trace Trade says, and he's right. The price is psychological. If you really truly believe the the stock AMC is worth two thousand eight, you'll hold it. You won't sell it and buy it again. You won't do that. If you truly believe GameStop is worth 100000 you won't sell it. You'll hold it. Uh, or at least you'll hold mo the majority of your shares, or either or. So I think that's all I have for today. Thank you very much for your time. Uh, tune in tomorrow after the stock market closes. I don't know what time I'll be doing this tomorrow, but uh, hopefully a lot earlier than today. And it's almost midnight where I am at right now. So Thank you again, and this is Apex Investor signing out. Ape strong together. <laughs>